Hello one and all, my name is John Clare, this is uh, John's Dark Heart, and you, as always, are very welcome. Alright, today's piece is a piece I like to call Carrion. Um, it centres around two animals that, generally speaking, have quite negative connotations and quite closely linked with death. That is, I know death, me talking about death, how original. Yeah, the hyena and the vulture. Alright, so if we bring it up here now. It's a piece that I'm quite proud of, actually. The reason being is because this piece took me an inordinate amount of time. I'll, I'll show you exactly how much time a bit later on. With this piece, because these two animals, like, in the, like, like for instance, in The Lion King, you know, the hyenas were like scars, aiders and abettors. They were a bunch of sneaky, evil little creatures. The term hyena can be used as a pejorative against someone. So if you didn't like someone, you thought they were sneaky and obsequious, you know, you'd turn around and call them a hyena. The vultures, like again, another word that can be used in the pejorative, like for someone hanging around waiting for someone to die so they can claim their inheritance, you know, you call them vultures, you know, because they're looking to pick the corpse clean. I figured with this piece, I wanted to kind of do something that's slightly positive. So like, I wanted to show like how, you know, I think hyenas are beautiful animals. I think vultures are amazing creatures. They're big, they're impressive, massive wingspans. I think they're beautiful animals, but I think it's interesting that in terms of their symbolism and how we see them in Western society, they're seen as negatives. Also with their close connotations towards death. Hyenas, although they're pursuit hunters, can will also scavenge. You know, they have these jaw bones that can munch through bone as easily as we'd eat through melted cheese. So you'd often see them around decaying corpses, the same with vultures. Like vultures will often circle overhead while an animal is in the process of dying. But in fairness to them, although they humans tend to see them quite negatively, they are beautiful creatures. And I, I wanted to kind of exemplify that within this piece. So anyway, let's go into the piece now okay here we are so first and foremost what we're going to do as i want to do we'll go into canvas and then canvas information here we are and if we go into statistics as per usual <laughs> you can see how often you know how many strokes i'm using and how long it's actually took me to draw the piece um total strokes made 28,366 track time is 64 hours and 51 minutes so as you can tell there was a lot of time and effort put into this piece mostly through the vulture feathers which i will show you now in a minute so let's hop into time lapse replay there we go oh yeah something i used to do quite a lot actually because like I, I often do these um write down these little quotes because i with a mind to when I share this up on social media, say for instance on Reels, on Instagram, or TikTok, or whatever else, I'd like to put up these little quotes at the start. I'll show you, actually, I'll show you in another piece where I did it. Uh, the first piece I did it in, if I can find it here, is this drone of a raven. All right? So if we just go into the time lapse replay quickly here, Kelly's empty, all the devils are here. That's a quote from. Um, Shakespeare's The Tempest. So yeah, hell is empty, all the devils are here. There we go. So we're done there, let's get out of that. Hop back into Carrion. If I can find it again. There we are. Okay, and let's hop back into Time Lapse Replay. So, so the quote is, there was a man who sold a hyena skin while the beast was still alive and who was killed in hunting of it. That's a quote from Winston Churchill, apparently. So let's scroll on a little bit. What I'm doing here, rough lines. This doesn't usually take long, in fairness. I usually have, I mean, I'll probably have that done in about 15, 20 minutes. Just because it's a rough sketch, it doesn't mean it's the final sketch. Obviously, I'm going to be working through the details as, as I go. So we'll punch in a little bit so you can see better. So the lines, as you can see, are very rough. And only that, I kind of resized the hyena head because I, I, I saw straight away that the proportions were incorrect. So I enlarged the hyena head, got it right. Then we start going into the refining process. So I like honing my lines and trying to make sure everything's looking workable. Don't worry too much about um, applying pressure. Don't worry about too, too much about things being too dark or too light because you can always change it within the process. 
don't be scared of things like contrast. Don't be scared of having to make changes because you will be doing that anyway, as you can see here. And this is the great thing about working digitally. I know I, know I evangelize this quite a lot, but I'm adding bits, I'm taking bits away. I'm, I'm altering things as they go, you know, changing tone, adding light, adding dark, whatever else. This piece in fairness, I mean, the actual drawing of the hyena didn't take me that long to do. I mean, as you can tell, if you look up here, this is only like two minutes into the, um, the drawing of the piece. The hyena, that was that didn't take me long at all. The vulture, on the other hand, this is where we get into the meat. So here's the vulture. So this is me roughing out the body here and resizing, continuously resizing. So I don't think I necessarily appreciate just how much space this bird was going to take up because I wanted to keep it in portrait. I didn't actually want it to uh, go into landscape. Again, creativity is born out of limitation. So the limitation here is I want to keep it in portrait. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm drawing the bird and trying to get it within the, the limitations of the, uh, the canvas size. Let's punch in a little bit. This is where most of the time was because as you can probably see, I'm drawing every goddamn feather individually and that's the bit that takes so much time i'm drawing every feather individually and i'm shading each feather individually and what i want to show is i want to show the lines within the feather if you know what i mean so it looks like a feather it's just like again it's just kind of patience which is something People ask me, oh, you must have a lot of patience to do what you do. No, I don't. I have no patience at all. But somehow I find patience to do this kind of thing. And I think a lot of this is me trying to work out how I'm going to do what I'm going to do because this is very much a process. You know, I'm figuring things out as I go. You know, it's almost like a problem solving exercise when you're drawing. Because sometimes you may come across something you don't know how how to render. What is the right way to shade it? What is the right way to kind of show this particular structure within whatever it is that you're drawing. Sometimes you need to figure that out. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm figuring it out as I go. And that's me drawing each and every feather. And it's not so much it's hard to do. It's more like it's, it is very time consuming. I don't like taking shortcuts. And that's probably down to my own stubbornness. You know, once I kind of figured it out, then it became a lot easier. This process became a lot easier then. But now I've kind of worked out how to do it. It's just a case of replicating it throughout the piece. Now that doesn't necessarily say that it's going to be done quickly because it wasn't done quickly. It took bloody ages. You know, as you can tell, it's quite a laborious um, process. But once it got done, it got done. And I was really happy with the result in the end. And there we go. On that one there, because just to give you an example, this reference photo here, this was this is a photograph that I took at London Zoo. It was of a griffin vulture. It was perched up on top of like this kind of tree-like structure. But I wanted the foot to be flat, so I had to go back in and reference uh, vultures' feet in order to make sure that I was happy with the way that vulture foot looked, that it looked like it was part of the animal. I mean, just to quickly mention references as well, because I use references quite a lot. The photograph that I use for this hyena, if I can find it, I'll show it up here now. The reference for this hyena I took from my, I don't know, uh, Pinterest. Uh, and the reason why I took it is because it had uh, one of its eyes was kind of almost like hanging out of its head. And I thought that looked quite interesting. And I use references a lot in my drawings, a hell of a lot in my drawings. And I don't see, again, I don't see that as being an issue. If you're just using references to practice your drawing now, like sometimes I do that with, like for instance, the piece I'm working on at the minute is this one here. And I'm just using, I mean, it's still very much unfinished. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done with it. And who knows, it may feature in a future video. This to me is just a practice drawing. It's of a hyena, I like hyenas, so I wanted to draw one. So I just thought it'd be cool to kind of draw a hyena. This is another cool thing about folk, um, Procreate actually. You can actually bring in references. There we go. And you can resize them and move them about and position them any way you like. And it's a really, really useful feature within Procreate. And it's something I do recommend people use if you can. If, you, if you're not aware of it, hit the spanner at the top there, go into Canvas, hit Reference, and you can actually import an image. I'll actually show you how to do it while, while we're here. Um, we'll open up a new uh, canvas. I'll just use social media portrait. This is one that I use particularly, the one I designed. Reason being is because I put a lot of my stuff up on social media, TikToks and Instagrams, John Starcart. So that's why I use that particular canvas size. I use that canvas size so if the, the ratio fits exactly with the phone screen. 
So quite cynical on my part, I know, but still. So if I wanted to import a reference, all I literally need to do is hit, like I said, hit spanner, go down here to reference, right, hit image, import image, and there you go. And it literally imports the image from your photos. It's that easy. That was carrying. And what we'll do now is we'll round this out, shall we? So, so that was the piece. Um, again, it's called Carrion. Uh, hope you like it. Much like the piece last week, Cerberus 2, Carrion will now be up for sale in two sizes, A3 at 75 euros and A4 at 45 euros up on John's Dark Cart. So if you'd like to support what I do, what we do, then uh, please, um, head over there and if you're interested pick yourself up a print to round this out I spent a lot of time and effort on this piece and yes I know it's about death and John talks about death in every one of his videos blah 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 but at the same time these are two beautiful animals man hyenas are gorgeous and you see sometimes with um, with zookeepers who are able to develop a close relationship with these animals I mean you wouldn't necessarily want to do it in the wild because they would chew through you fairly quickly. But, you know, seeing how like tactile these animals are, how, you know, they're, they're, they're handsome looking animals. I know they look a bit funny, but I love them. I think they look amazing. Vultures as well are big, impressive birds. I mean, naturally beautiful creatures. In a way, I'd say as much as I like symbolism in my drawings, and this piece is called Carrion, and it does feature two scavengers, in a way, I like to think that this kind of exemplifies how beautiful these animals can be. You know, maybe even like subverting that symbolism to a degree. But then, it's all very well me saying that. I mean, whatever meaning that I put into a piece, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to feel the same about it. You as the viewer, as the spectator, as the, the, the consumer of the work, you're not going to look at it in the same way as as the artist who created it. You're not gonna look at it the same way as I do. And that's absolutely fine. You're gonna derive whatever meaning you want from it. Maybe you just think it looks cool. That's also awesome. If you see something else in the piece, that's also awesome. You know, that's the wonderful thing about art. Art is subjective. That's something that I find really fascinating about creativity in general. It's like, like for instance, like one of my favorite bands would be Rage Against the Machine. You know, I listen to their music because, like, I, especially as a teenager back in back in the nineties, I used to listen to their music because it was angry, and I was an angry kid, and I resonated with it. I didn't necessarily pick up on all the political implications that are within the music and all that are within the lyrics. That doesn't stop me enjoying them as a band. And if you do want to delve deeper and you want to delve deeper into the lyrics and the meaning behind it, you can do that. And you. You know, you may want to research the, the historical events that they're talking about within their music. That's the rewarding thing about art as well, is you can you can take from it whatever you want, and the more you want to look into it, the more I feel you'll be rewarded for it. So when it comes down to it, don't worry too much about whether or not people see in your work what you intend to communicate. Some may, most may not. That's cool. Don't get too bogged down with that. And for those who are viewing art, you know, whatever it is you see in it is whatever it is you see in it. And that's also cool. You know, art is a wonderful thing, both to be created by and to be appreciated by. And if you are creating, whatever it is that you want to communicate, share it the world in whatever way you see fit. My name's John Clare. This has been John's Dark Heart. And as always, you are very welcome. Till next time.